So this is Mario with me on microflight. And this is the wing that's going to go on the Tenarag radio control microlight. I still have to put the pockets here, but uh, it's on its way. Okay, so I'm sewing the wing here. And this is the center section. It's going to hold the center rib. And I've been cranking on this for uh, for the past uh, week, late at night, just making uh, progress. This is the wing, and it's the uh, nose uh, cone at the front that'll be uh, coming up soon. But it's a finished frame. It needs some motor mount. Very, very nice. So this is just a sneak peek at uh, where I'm at right now. More to come. Okay, so the frame has undergone a couple revisions. A slight modifications to the uh, triangulation section here and just to beef it up. I still need to put a motor mount there. Uh, you can see the shocks have also been streamlined from the Trek, you know, the one that I did uh, uh, years ago. No more spring on the outside of the shaft. I embedded the spring right inside here and it looks, it almost looks like it doesn't have a shock. It looks like just a, like a tubular a bar there, but it is a shock. And you can see how that works. And each one of these has about 10 pounds of pressure or resistance. Uh, by the same uh, approach, I did the front ones using the same materials, but in smaller versions. So th that one has also suspension at the front. Very spiffy, very robust setup here and very lightweight. So I'm at this point here, the control bar needs the cable system here. I'm still working on some of these parts here, specific parts, you know, for this uh, particular uh, Tanarica micro light. I mean, you can see the work that has gone into here and I mean, I want to carry that through most of the trike. Given that some areas need to be done, you know, with the MIA micro flight way, and that's just to retain our uh, trademark uh, look and feel, but also, you know, maintain the uh, robustness and, and uh, um, efficiency so that this model flies as good as uh, all of the ones that I show in, in all my videos. Yeah, you can see the wing here. Yeah, the wing is also done very well. You can see how beautiful this wing came out. And most of my wings are topless, and that's just to eliminate some of the complexity in having a kink post and cable system that uh, basically hold the, uh, uh, the, the wing in the right uh, position. Uh, but I like my wings topless because it just makes it for a clean wing. You can see it here, it's very clean. And I have my own system that I employ here that I had to design to uh, keep the wing in that position. You do need washout on these uh, micro lights and uh, hang glider type uh, wings in order for them to fly. Without the washout that you see at the uh, tips of the wings, these wings would, would not fly uh, at all. I mean, they would uh, dip down, and so you need that washout. I mean, that is, uh, if you've seen uh, birds and particularly uh, falcons and eagles fly, you know, they, you can see the wingtips, how they curve the wingtips, and that's to establish a stability in, in flight. So the same thing applies to hang glider or micro light wings. you got to have washout. Uh, and if you are a real hang glider or micro light pilot. You probably already know these things. I don't need to say that, but this is for somebody that's watching this for the first time and is interested in, uh, in getting into this particular uh, section of the hobby. The wing here is a, is a well done wing. This is not a uh, wing that has been uh, done by experimentation. I mean, I did that back in the 80s. I had you know a chance to experiment with a lot of different wings, not just 
the winds that are supported with cable systems and king posts and uh, double uh, cables on the from the control bar. I mean, I had that back in the 80s. And so there was a lot of experimentation, not only with that, but also with wings that were not your typical weight shift wings. Well, wing warping, even one of the wings that I uh, was planning on selling as a kit back in 2000, when I started posting in RC groups, was done with the intent to sell a simplistic wing at that time because of the uh, batteries and technology that was available at that time. It wasn't to the level it is today. So we can say that a lot of the technology that we have in uh, motors and batteries uh, has come a long, long way, which has allowed us to do, you know, this type of work, you know, uh, uh, to this level where you get, you know, some decent flights out of an electric uh, propulsion system. Now, I'm very big on, on electric flight because, uh, you know, it just makes sense from uh, a lot of points of views. I mean, I have another video that I did, five reasons why electric flight is better than nitro flight. And so if you want to find out what my opinions are on that, you know, take a look at that video as well. But I explained there why I selected electric flight, and this comes, you know, from back in the 80s when I started with electric uh, flight uh, models. All my models, not only the hang gliders that I did back then, but you know, electric helicopters that I was developing in the 80s, you know, in um, in view that I was going to produce a micro helicopter in later years, which I eventually did. Uh, nobody had a little tiny, tiny helicopter, you know, four ounce, 20 inch uh, rotor, uh, and so Mia Micro Flight has also been pioneering a lot of that work. So a lot of this work has, has come from many years uh, done much, much earlier than uh, some people uh, really uh, know. So this is where this is coming from. But let me get back to this, uh, this particular uh, Tanar here. Um, I'm very uh, eager to finishing this and, and get it flying because it's really looking really, really spiffy here. So once again, this is Mario with me on my flight. Stay tuned for more.